rant time. One of the things which irks me regarding some videos is the title, Secret Tips and Tricks. Look, there's no cabal of despotic devs sitting in some dark room creating helpful device features then intentionally keeping them a secret from you. Hidden? I'll accept because when features are buried three or four menus deep, the word hidden does loosely apply, but I digress. Today, four months later, I'm gonna run you through some things I've picked up, crowdsourced and stumbled upon as I re-examine the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, much of which also applies to the standard Galaxy Watch 4, and share with you some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your watch. And I have an apology, a reconciliation I, I need to make, a, a realization of just how useful uh, a certain person is in my life. After the intro. Back in August of 2021, I first reviewed the Galaxy Watch 4 series with a primary focus on the Watch 4 Classic. Some features like Spotify downloads were not yet ready for prime time. And some features I wasn't quite ready to accept for daily use. There's only one Bixby I recognize. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. But some things have changed since August and in December, the watch received some updates. So where are we now? Where am I now? Let's begin with the thing you're going to notice every time you flick your wrist or tap those function buttons, the watch faces. In that December update, four new watch faces were added. The info brick, basic dashboard, live wallpaper, and one specifically focused on weather. Personally, I rock the digital dashboard face because it's info dense enough for my needs, though I think a lot of users will like the new info brick and basic dashboards as well. If you like pretty animations, you may find the live wallpaper to your liking. It animates when you raise to wake and then has a very subtle Thanos finger snap effect where the edges of the color blob disintegrate. I'm not a huge fan, but you might be. An addition I did find useful in the update was a new gesture. The ability to make a knock knock motion and launch a preset app or feature. I have this feature set to launch the workout selection though I'll probably change it soon because of launching them another way, which I'll address later in the video. And I know that y'all are power hungry. I have the power! No, 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 not like that, like this. I can do this all day. You want that big battery energy. We, we don't do that here. And that's a bit of a letdown, but over time I've taken some steps which have increased my uptime a bit. One I use anytime a watch includes that feature is bedtime mode. What this does is turn off always on display and raise wrist to wake. In addition, it mutes notifications and sounds, all of which are polite things to do anyway if you wear your watch to bed and are sleeping next to someone. But because it essentially turns the display off, similar to theater mode, you're gonna save some juice for those hours you're asleep. You can activate bedtime mode on demand or set it on a schedule. Side note, how many of you turned on snore detection? If you did, what do you think? Has it helped you in any way? I mean, now that you know you snore, or not. But what have you done with that knowledge? Let me know in the comments below. Now, there are other things you can do to manage the battery life. This display is bright and beautiful. I mean, it's really bright, and auto brightness, in my experience, seems to really favor keeping it lit. So you might consider turning off auto brightness and finding a level of brightness which is gonna work for you in most of the environments you'll find yourself. There are, of course, other things you can do to save on battery as well. Turn off Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi for, yeah. Set your display to wake only with the press of the buttons. Hell, why don't we just buy Ferraris with the stipulation that we can drive them only on surface streets during rush hour traffic? I try to actually do the least battery saving possible, personally, because why buy a device if I'm not gonna use it to its full potential consistently? So, while you may find solace in your purchasing decision by throttling your watch, I'd rather just put it on the charger every morning while I shower and get ready for work. But you know, do you boo. Pro tip, 
If you've been at work all day and have evening plans, but don't have a charger at work or the time to charge at home prior to your evening out, I'm sure you already know that you can punch that battery icon in the shortcuts menu and the watch will cut essential functions, turn off Wi-Fi and LTE so you can eke out all the juice you can get. But did you know that you can take that one step further, hit settings, battery, and activate watch only mode? That does what it sounds like. Turns your smartwatch into a dumb watch, but you'll still look smart because at your evening event, you won't be wearing a dead device on your wrist. You're welcome. One thing I have not seen too many folks talk about is the granular volume controls on the watch. Adding the volume shortcut to your quick settings menu allows you to control the volume for your ringtone, media playback, notifications, system sounds, and Bixby. And staying with granular control, your heart rate measurement is an important factor to consider when using the watch. Obviously, depending on what you decide, you're going to have an effect on battery life. You can set your watch to measure continuously, every 10 minutes while still, or manual on-demand measurements only. Remember my Ferrari analogy? Yeah. I have mine set to measure continuously. Why do this? so that my measurements keep up with my interval training workouts. I may have moments when I stop during training and then get started back up again. And I found the watch has more latency when I don't have it set to measure continuously. If you aren't in the gym too often or doing high intensity workouts, I think you're just fine with the 10 minute intervals or even on demand measurements. It's kind of bittersweet, never thought I'd come back. I have something to admit. I've hated on Bixby on Galaxy Watch. My fears were irrational. My fear of activating it on my watch and having to activate it on my phone and instead of Google Assistant, my, my fear of it being a waste, of, of it being craptastic, I, I was wrong. So wrong. But I've recognized the error of my ways and, and I'm here for you now, Bixby. If you'll have me. One of the most natural ways to interact with your Galaxy Watch is via voice for many things, and I have to admit that having used other watches with voice input, Galaxy Watch use always felt incomplete. Now, I'm also used to having watches with LTE connections, so there's a caveat here with Bixby, but it's still fantastic as long as you have a network connection. Setting timers, starting workouts, setting reminders. Those reminders set on your watch, also showing up on your Galaxy phone and the Samsung Reminders app and in your calendar. Doing laundry and wanting to be reminded when you need to get your clothes out of the dryer. Hey Bixby, set a timer for 40 minutes. Pro tip, please do this. Those of us in apartments with crowded laundry rooms are tired of y'all leaving your things in the dryer for an extra hour or two after they're done drying. Now. Would I rather have Google Assistant? Of course. If Google Assistant never comes to this watch and I only ever have Bixby, how would I feel about that? Actually, I'd be fine. This gives me enough functionality that my needs are pretty much met, even for my business functionality. Working with the Android Central team means working across time zones, so when me and Alex Doby, for example, are collaborating and need to have a virtual face-to-face, -face, Bixby, what time will it be in London if it's 9 a.m. in Los Angeles? And some days, the calls from my other business interests can come in fast and furious, but I can see all calls I've sent to voicemail or just missed. Bixby, show me a list of my missed calls. And last Bixby note here, did you know that you can extend functionality of Bixby with capsules? Just open up Bixby on your Samsung device and go to its store and search for something you may want the watch to do. For me, it's generally reminder type function, so, Ask My Brain, that app and its capsule, which is, a capsule is another way of saying extensions, uh, added functionality for base speed. That's one of my faves for the watch. It does things like help me remember which target location carries my favorite beard oil and wash Scotch Porter. Hey Bixby, ask my brain to remember that Target Woodland Hills carries Scotch Porter. Hey Bixby, which target location carries Scotch Porter? This is also handy for remembering things like your favorite dish at a particular restaurant or someone's favorite candy or clothing designer for when birthdays or Christmas rolls around. 
Bixby is actually more powerful on this generation of Samsung watches than ever before. So I recommend activating it and taking the time to engage with it as it really will extend your functionality and enjoyment of your Galaxy watch. A few quick features to get into. By default, your watch is set to show last app within 20 seconds. So. You use an app, your watch sleeps, you're raised awake and want to hit the app again, but it's gone back to the drawer. You can change how long your last app remains active on screen after it sleeps. The camera controller, it is there and it works great. Set your phone up for that group shot, then get in the shot and activate your phone from there and preview the results, all from your wrist. Instead of setting a complication which shows you the temperature outside, consider using the feels like complication. If it's 48 degrees outside, but very windy, it'll actually feel much colder. And this readout gives you that temperature instead of the actual temperature. Fall detection has been improved to operate better if you fall from a static position, such as collapsing if you're just standing still. Want better text input and voice to text input? Install Gboard from the Play Store, and now you can swipe for text input and you're going to have improved voice to text input much better and faster than the stock keyboard. And please people, for the love of Obatala, please use theater mode when at the cinema. I'm tired of having my enjoyment disrupted by people raising the arm to check a message and good news, it has a timer so you can set it to be active anywhere from one to four hours. If you love me and want me to enjoy my movie, because you know it's all about me and I, and I know you do, theater mode, do it. And if you're a data nerd like I am, you can change how info dense each workout screen is. But did you know you can change each screen's layout? If I'm going on a walk, I can go into settings and you see data one and data two. Those are the two screens I can currently swipe between. Tap and you get into layout mode. Pick one of the layouts which has the most partitions and now you've got a screen where you can tap each partition and choose which data set goes there. And like I said, it is info dense. You can get a, quite a bit on screen, customizable for each workout type. And you know the other thing I want you to do? Find out who your most authentic self is. What makes you excited to get out of the bed despite all the noise and madness around you? Dream big, plan big, make 2022 as awesome as possible. I'll be here with you, trying to make these videos as awesome as possible in 22. That's it, those are all my tips. I will catch you in the next video next year. Thank you for watching.